So the adrenal gland, remember this gland, a very important part of the endocrine system, sits on top of the kidney. This is the kidney here. And the adrenal gland is on top of it. So you have two kidneys, you have two adrenal glands. And the adrenal gland, like the kidney, also has a cortex, which is the outer side of it, and the medulla, which is the inner side, as well as the capsule, which you don't have to care about. This we have to ignore. Don't pay attention to this. But the adrenal gland has three layers, has four layers, actually. So this... This is the cortex, this is the medulla. So the first layer, the very outermost layer, is the zona glomerulosa. Zona glomerulosa of the adrenal cortex. And the zona glomerulosa is responsible for making mineral corticoids, which regulate mineral balance, so electrolyte balance like potassium. And an um, example of a mineral corticoid is aldosterone. So the adrenal gland makes aldosterone, which you should already know by now. Remember what stimulated aldosterone release from the adrenal gland? Remember it was angiotensin II, which stimulates aldosterone release. Now the next layer, as we go deeper into the adrenal gland, if we're going deeper now, is the zona fasciculata. Okay, zona fasciculata is responsible for making glucocorticoids which is responsible for glucose metabolism as well as many other things. We're going to talk more about this later. But this is a simple way, glucocorticoids, glucose metabolism. The examples of this, the main one you're going to have to know about is cortisol, but there's a couple other ones. But cortisol is the main one you want to know, also coming from adrenal gland. As we go deeper, the next layer is the zona reticularis. And zona reticularis is responsible for making androgens. So androgens, which will stimulate masculinization. So you have DHEA, that's one, I spelled that wrong. And then this will turn into testosterone, okay? So that is our three layers of the adrenal cortex. Now if we go into the adrenal medulla, adrenal medulla, the adrenal medulla is responsible for making stress hormones. So that's the catecholamines that stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. So that would be epinephrine and norepinephrine. And these stimulate the alpha and beta receptors and cause sympathetic stimulation. So, just to review, this is all the three layers of the adrenal cortex. You do have to know it. Luckily, it's a little easier. They made it so it's GFR. So GFR are the three layers of the adrenal cortex. And you can remember which each layer, what each layer makes because this it makes salt, sugars, and then sex. So as you go deeper the sweeter it gets. The, the deeper in you go, the sweeter it gets. Then that's GFR, those are the three layers of the adrenal cortex, and then finally you have the adrenal medulla, which makes epinephrine and nor norepinephrine. Okay, let's go into production of these steroids. So all of the, all of this, all of the aldosterone, cortisol, sex hormones, we're gonna talk about how these are produced. We're gonna start in the zona glomerulosa, that's the first one, remember that makes the mineral corticoids. So you start off with cholesterol. Cholesterol is the very base molecule for our adrenal steroid hormones. And we're gonna go down. Cholesterol is gonna be made into pregnenolone. It's gonna become pre pre uh, progesterone. And then these are two key enzymes you wanna know about, 21 hydroxylase and 11 beta, beta hydroxylase. 21 hydroxylase makes this into deoxycorticosteroid. And then 11 beta hydroxylase is gonna take off this deoxy it's gonna remove. It's gonna put back an oxy, so now you get corticosteroid. You just you just put back an oxy, so now now there's no more deoxy, and now you get corticosteroid, and then this corticosteroid will become will be made into aldosterone. So that is how aldosterone is made. You don't have to memorize all these little these little ones. You don't have to memorize this. I'm gonna tell you what's the most key in a second. Now, the way we go to the zona uh, fasciculata is through this 17 alpha hydroxylase. And 17 alpha hydroxylase will work on both pregnenolone and progesterone, and then it adds a hydroxy group on the 17th carbon. So that's how you get a 17 hydroxy pregnenolone. So it's honestly, it's just you take this thing and you put a 17 hydroxy, 17 hydroxy progesterone. Okay. Now remember, we're in the zona fasciculata, we're in the deeper layer of the adrenal cortex now that's responsible for making steroids. So now the next thing we do is again we have a 21 hydroxylase, the same thing. So it's all mirrors, it's two, two of each hormone of, of each enzyme. 21 hydroxylase again just removes it um takes off that hydroxy. So now you have an 11 deoxy cortisol. Okay. 
Now, the, again, you see the you see same same enzyme here, eleven beta hydroxylase. And what is eleven beta hydroxylase going to do? You saw, remember, it took off the deoxy here. Again, it's going to take take off the deoxy. You just get cortisol. Now, all you're left with is cortisol thanks to eleven beta hydroxylase. Let's erase everything so it's more clear. Now. Remember, the next layer was the zona reticularis, responsible for making sex hormones, especially androgens. So you get DHEA, which is turned into androstenodione, which is eventually turned into testosterone. Okay, so that's how we get our androgen production. And do you remember how we get, remember testosterone is turned into estrogen. How do we do that? What enzyme do we need to turn testosterone into estrogen? So testosterone is going to go out and leave the adrenal gland. And how is it going to turn into Estrogen. We need aromatase to turn testosterone into estrogen. And then the other thing that you can turn testosterone into is the DHT, dihydrotestosterone. And that's a super strong di testosterone. And what enzyme do you need to turn into DHT? Right, the key enzyme here was 5 alpha reductase when you get DHT. So uh, this is a lot of details here. I want to give you a simplified view of everything. It shows you all the same things. You start off with cholesterol, you get, you get these precursors. And then the key enzymes here are the 21 alpha, 21 hydroxylase, 11 beta hydroxylase. And with these enzymes, you're going to get 11 deoxycorticosteroid. And then remember that 11 beta hydroxylase takes off that deoxy. You get corticosteroid, and eventually it's going to become aldosterone. So this is a precursor. Now, the way we go from the mineral corticoid to the glucocorticoid is with this key enzyme, 17 alpha hydroxylase. And the thing is, you just add a 17 hydroxyl group, and this is the key molecule you're going to get. I'm going to talk about why there's a key molecule later. And then, again, same enzymes. To go down, you do 17 alpha, 7, 21 hydroxylase, 11 beta hydroxylase, and you get cortisol. And then you can, uh, you can take these precursors for them, from the glucocorticoids and make androgens. Okay? So, key things. Just remember the whole skeletal structure of this. You start with the mineral corticoids, you go to glucocorticoids, you go to androgens from left to right. To go from left to right, you need 17 alpha hydroxylase. If you don't have 17 alpha hydroxylase, you cannot go this way. This whole thing is shut off. Okay. Now, the other two enzymes to go down to develop and, and to eventually develop aldosterone and cortisol, you need first 21 hydroxylase and then you need 11 beta hydroxylase. Okay. And then the other two mo key molecules you're going to have to watch out for are these two because these are going to build up and they're going to tell you because obviously if you knock out this one, this is going to build up. If you knock out this one, this is going to build up. So that's why you want to know this because you can test for these. Okay. But again, if this is just if you really don't want to memorize everything. This is actually really easy to memorize. If I go back, all you have to do is memorize this side. If you memorize this, pregnenolone, progesterone, then this is the same thing. It's just with the, seven, with the 17 hydroxy group on it. And then this one, progesterone, this one is a little different because instead of deoxycorticosteroid, you get a deoxycortisol, but it's basically the same thing. And you know, you know you're know, you dealing with steroids here, steroids, you're dealing with cortisol here, cortisol. And then again, same thing, you have the 11 beta hydroxylase, just, just um, takes off this deoxy group, it puts back an a um, a OH group, puts an OH group back, so it's you remove this, and now you have corticosterone, and you have cortisol. So it's the same, it's very pattern pattern based, okay? And you get DH, DHEA and testosterone here. So why am I going in all this painful detail through all of this? The reason why is because it's very relevant to pathology. So there's a, there's a group of diseases called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, that's CAH. You hear this a lot. And this is results from autosomal recessive defects in the enzymes needed for cortisol, aldosterone, and androgen synthesis. So that's, those are the enzymes I just talked about, the 21 alpha hydroxylase, 20, uh, 17 alpha hydroxylase, 21 hydroxylase, 11 beta hydroxylase. And all of these forms of congenital adrenal hyperplasia have impaired cortisol synthesis. So you're not making cortisol very well. So in response, if you're not making very much cortisol, what's going to happen to your ACTH levels? Is it going to be up or down? Remember, the answer is that it's going to be increased because... You're removing the feedback inhibition by decreasing cortisol. The other thing you want to know is there will be hyperpigmentation in these diseases. And why is that? There's going to be hyperpigmentation because remember that MSH is co-secreted with ACTH, which is increased. So MSH is also increased. And you see hyperpigmentation in all congenital hyperplasias, adrenal hyperplasias. 
The three main enzymes we just talked about, I'm not going to repeat them. Clinical features depends on the deficient enzyme. So you have to understand the clinical features. You have to understand what, if you're going to have decreased uh, in, in cortisol, you're going to have decreased in aldosterone, or in sex hormones. And you have to know that, you have to know that you have to know the skeleton I just talked about and the enzymes and where where each enzyme is in that skeleton. And then in response, you're also want to, going to want to think about these two do BP. You want to think about blood pressure. You want to think about potassium levels. And then you're going to want to think about sexual development. Okay. Cortisol and aldosterone regulate BP. Remember that cortisol, just trust my word, we're going to see it later. Aldosterone regulates BP, but with sodium reabsorption in the kidneys. And remember that when we reabsorb sodium, we have to secrete potassium. So when you have more aldosterone function, you have increased blood pressure. So this increases blood pressure, and you're going to be secreting potassium, so you're going to have decreased potassium when you have too much aldosterone. And then obviously the opposite is going to happen when you have too little. So let's talk about 17 hydroxylase deficiency. So what will, will you have too much aldosterone or too little? The answer is you're going to have too much aldosterone because you're going to be shutting off this pathway, and the only pathway you can go is this way. And you're going to have too much or too little cortisol and sex hormones. Again, we just shut off this pathway so we can't make these. You can't go this way. So now you have decreased cortisol, decreased testosterone. Um, now, wh what happens with this decreased sex hormones is in males, you get ambiguous genitalia. What, is, what do I mean by that? It means that basically you need that testosterone for development of the penis. And so if they're not making much testosterone... The penis is not going to develop much. It's going to remain tiny. It's going to look like a clitoris. It's going to look like a half clitoris, half penis. That's why it's an ambiguous genitalia. You can't tell if it's a male or a female. And then in females, you're going to get lack of secondary sex development. So normally, they're going to grow up. When they're kids, they're going to be fine. When they're pre pre pubescent, they're going to be okay because they don't need that testosterone. Okay, they're just going to they're going to have a clitoris. It's going to be fine. Nothing wrong. However, when you get secondary sexual development, what what hormone do you need? What hormone is responsible for development of the breast, for development of pubic hair? The hormone that you need is estrogen. And remember that you need you need to get estrogen from testosterone. We, we don't have testosterone in this problem. So these patients are going to have um, decreased estrogen, lack of secondary sex characteristics. They're going to have increased aldosterone. And so what's going to happen to the blood pressure and the potassium levels? So you're going to get increased blood pressure. You can get decreased potassium. Remember, you get extra sodium reabsorption and you get extra potassium secretion. This is your clinical picture. You don't have to memorize all this if you understand this. All right, next is the 21 hydroxylase deficiency. What happens here? Are you going to have increased or decreased aldosterone? You see, the aldosterone is low. How about cortisol? You see, cortisol is low. And what about our sex hormones? We're going to see that we're going to have increased sex hormones because it's all going to be shunted. All your development is going to be shunted there. Your, your hormone production is going to be shunted in this direction. And the key marker you're going to see is you're going to see increased 7, 17 hydroxylase, hy, 17 hydroxyprogesterone. The other thing you're going to see is you're going to see increased sex hormone production. So you're going to get precocious puberty. And in females, you're going to get virilization. Why do you get virilization in females? Because in females, well, first of all, you're going to get too much testosterone, and it's this testosterone that's going to cause virilization. So virilization means development of male sexual traits, so it's deeper voice, facial hair. You're going to get clitoral enlargement, and it's all because of too much testosterone. So that's the sexual features. What's going to happen to our BP and our K? We have, we have low aldosterone. We have low cortisol. So you're going to have low BP. You're going to have increased potassium. Okay. Finally, we're going to go to 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency. What's going to happen here? What's going to happen to your levels of aldosterone? Here we see again it's blocked, so you're going to decrease this. Cortisol again decreased, testosterone increased. And then the final thing you want to take note of is this 11 deoxycorticosteroid, which I told you about was important. And this is a weak mineral, mineral corticosteroid. Okay, and it's going to be built up because again we have blocked here. So we block the thing, so it's not going to be able to turn into this. So it's going to build up. So the thing here, the tricky thing here is, you're going to get your blood pressure. 
you would you would you might instinctively think it's low because of decreased aldosterone, decreased cortisol, but blood pressure is actually increased because you have extra mineral corticoids. So you still get that get that sodium reabsorption. And what's gonna to happen to your levels of K? Again, your K levels will be low because remember your mineral corticoids, sodium reabsorption, potassium secretion. And then what's gonna to happen to our sexual development? Again, we have too much testosterone. So in females, what's gonna happen? What did we just say in the last in the last slide? In females, you get virilization, which was what was virilization? That was development of male sexual male characteristics, so low voice facial hair, and then clitoral enlargement. So that is it for our, our review of the congenital adrenal hyperplasias. Just remember, you kind of want to know the skeleton. Know that this goes, this allows you to go from the, the mineral corticoids to glucocorticoids and sex hormones. And then these allow for, for uh, maturation of your hormones. So you get this, this nice hormones that you want to use. Remember the testosterone. And then just think about how these levels change, cortisol, aldosterone, sex hormones, and think about how they affect blood pressure, potassium, and sexual development. And you don't have to memorize it, and you don't have to memorize anything else. All right, so that's it for congenital hyperplasia, adrenal hyperplasia, and an introduction of the adrenal gland.